Am I the asshole for expecting my boyfriend to pay rent if he moves in with me? This is a doozy. I've been dating Josh for a year. I should say now that I, 24 female, don't ever want to be legally married, and Josh, 30 male, is divorced and doesn't want to remarry. We also live in a place where there is no common law marriage. Still, we want to take things a bit further and we're talking about Josh and his two daughters moving in with me. I own a three-bed two-bad house in a nice area. Josh rents a two-bed one-bath apartment, and his lease is coming up. My mortgage is 1k a month, and Josh's rent is 1.4k a month. It was important to me that we would have everything figured out before making the change so that there would be no surprises or disagreements about who pays what. I figured it would be unreasonable for Josh to expect to just live with me for free, especially since I'd be giving up one of my rooms so his daughters could have a room. I suggested that Josh pay $700 a month to me in rent, half of what he is currently paying. I would cover the cost of any home repairs, internet, garbage, etc. Then we would split utilities, even though there's three of them and one of me I don't mind splitting since that would be about what I'm currently paying I predict. And since I meal prep once a week I would just get my own groceries and he could get theirs. When I laid everything out Josh was very unhappy, and said since it's my house he shouldn't have to pay rent, and that we should split groceries. I told him he was welcome to buy his own house and I would move in with him and happily pay rent, while renting out my own house. He was mad at me because he said he's not in a position where he can buy a house. We can't come to an agreement, so I suggested he just find another apartment, the owners aren't letting him renew, and we could revisit the topic in a year. He's not happy with that either because rent prices have skyrocketed here and two bedrooms now go for around 1.8k a month, and he thinks he won't be able to find a place he can afford. I'm a bit frustrated because I feel like $700 a month is a really good deal compared to the likely $1,800 he will have to pay. Since we aren't going to get married or anything I don't understand why he thinks I would be okay with him living for free with his two kids. I'm happy to have romance and companionship but shared assets and finances are not something I want in life, I don't want to support a man. Am I the asshole for expecting my boyfriend to pay rent? Edit. I showed Josh this post and he thinks you all are wrong. So here's some input from him. Leslie makes 120k a year and I make 30k a year. I'm living paycheck to paycheck supporting two kids with no help from my ex-wife. It's gotten so expensive here that at this rate I'm not even going to be able to feed my kids soon without going to the food bank. No matter what, they're going to get fed. But it's not fair that she owns a house, and can go on vacations or spend $400 a month getting her hair done when I can't even buy my kids name brand cereal. She shouldn't charge me to live with her because she should understand that I want to be able to spend whatever I can giving my kids the childhood that they deserve. Not for me, but for them. Update. Thanks Reddit. Oh you won and I'm glad I posted here. After a very loud and angry argument with Josh, I broke up with him. Despite pretty much everyone telling him he was wrong Josh insisted that I should basically support the three of them because it's what would be best for his kids. He doesn't seem to understand that they aren't my kids and no one is going to want to bankroll the three of them. At least no one with a brain. The point is, I'm young, good looking, I own a house. I can do better than a broke single dad who has no education and a shitty job who thinks it's okay to mooch off me and scream in my face when I tell him no. Hope your next girlfriend is stupid enough to put up with you Josh middle finger light skin tone. No wonder your ex-wife left. What you're asking of Josh is very reasonable particularly given that he's bringing two children into your home. He's paying 1.4k plus utilities, and is facing an increase to $1,800 so figure somewhere between $2,100 and $2,400 a month and you're asking him for $700 a month and splitting utilities for four people. Honestly, this guy doesn't sound very smart. Not the asshole. Does he really think him and his two daughters can live anywhere for only the costs of splitting groceries? Even if he were to move them into a house with a friend or something he'd still have to pay more than just the grocery bill split in half. He's being utterly ridiculous here. Not the asshole and his comments for the edit sound ridiculously entitled. The expense of raising his children is not yours. Neither are his financial limitations. He thinks because you have more he should be entitled to it. He's wrong. I don't see a good future for this relationship. Do not let them move in so he can force you to provide the childhood his kids deserve. All expenses will become yours, including raising his children and funding their education. Don't trust him if he says he'll contribute. You see him for who he is now. 
Not the asshole where is the upside for you? There isn't one. You'll pay more and deal with someone's children and do all the work guaranteed. Not the asshole stick to your guns girl. He's crazy to think he doesn't have to pay rent. Am I the asshole for spending a lot of time in my bunker away from my family? My grandfather was an incredibly talented man who also suffered from paranoid schizophrenia, and he was convinced that the nuclear apocalypse was going to end the human race at some point. So he built his own bunker and then buried the entrance because he was convinced that both the KGB and the CIA were watching him and wanted to keep the bunker a secret. Yes, he was a crazy man. My dad inherited his house but never lived there, so when I had my first child in 2018 and got married in 2019, my dad made me an incredibly generous offer for the house. I bought computers that were more expensive than the house. The bunker became kind of an urban legend, mostly because my old grandpa used to tell a lot of crazy stories, but out of curiosity I went looking for it and found the entrance. The old man really did it. So, thanks to being stuck at home during the uneventful 2020 and 2021, I started remodeling the bunker to look less like a fallout vault and more like my own man cave. Everyone loves it, especially the kids, my nephews and friends' children. So the house is decorated to my wife's taste, while I can do whatever I want in the bunker, play gaming, fix computers, set up a whole home server, work from home, etc. However, lately she has been complaining about me being distant and spending a lot of time there and less time with her and our child. She is pregnant again, so she said she was worried, but I just promised to spend more time at the house. After a few weeks that wasn't enough for her and she accuses me of abandoning her. I'm asking for judgment here because I'm trying to be there for my family, but this bunker feels like it's the only thing that's really mine and where I can actually have a break, but my wife has said she's going to seal the entrance otherwise I might miss the birth and not even notice. Should I just move all my stuff into the house and forget about it? Am I really being neglectful, or is this just her pregnancy hormones talking? To be clear, I do help with the house chores and spend time with my son when I'm there and I have an intercom in the bunker so my wife can just call me if she needs anything and I'll go up there immediately. ETA. Everybody is asking me this. I spends at least 6 hours at the bunker on weekdays. I work there so I think is reasonable, and at least 4 hours on weekends. But yeah, er right, I need to make arrangements. I forgot to mention. Our son goes to kindergarten so my wife has time to work and sometimes be alone at home. ETA 2. Guys, I swear I'm taking notes. I'm just trying to understand what I should change about myself and how to talk to my wife about this. Remember that I spend at least 6 hours working, not scratching my belly. My manager allows me to log out early if I finished my work for the day but can't log out if I've been working for less than 6 hours. I also spend time talking with my team on Slack. ETA 3. So many of you are picking up on my language. I would appreciate if you explained calmly why my choice of words is so bad so I don't fuck things up when I speak to my wife. You are the asshole, not for spending time in the bunker. That sounds so fucking cool I would also be in there all the time lol. But for considering ignoring your wife who is pretty directly telling you that you aren't spending enough time with your family and being distant. You started a family dude. It's not all about you anymore. Info. How long do you spend there? How many hours a day are we talking about? And how much time are you spending with your family? How much time you spend with your wife and child? Don't consider the time you spend doing chores when you count. Don't consider the times you do only because she asked. How much time do you spend with them of your own volition? Moreover, you should realize that she's pregnant again. She doesn't have the same energy she had before to take care of the house and your child. She needs extra help, you say. So the house is decorated to my wife's taste while I can do whatever I want in the bunker, and then you say that you feel like the bunker is the only thing truly yours. But why? Why didn't you give more of an input while decorating the house? I spends at least 6 hours at the bunker on weekdays. I work there so I think is reasonable, and at least 4 hours on weekends. Info. What's the, at most, version of these numbers? Or the, on average? So you're essentially leaving the house every day to go to work, in the bunker. Does this work pay your bills? I can't really vote on this as you are leaving out too much information. How much time are you spending in the bunker? Have you invited your wife and son or at least your son, to give your wife some alone time, to join you in the bunker? I don't think she would be kicking off if you spending a small amount of time there. Am I the asshole for removing my son from my will after our relationship ended? 
I really don't think I'm wrong, but I just need reassurance that I'm doing the right thing. I, F, 50s, have a son, L, 30s, who is married to B, 20s. They have a daughter who is 4 months old, and my son has a daughter from a previous relationship who is 10. B and I had a falling out after their baby was born, and my son and granddaughters got caught in the crossfire. The falling out happened in March, and I know I did and said things I wasn't proud of, and although she hasn't apologized I'm sure she feels the same way. It would be too long to go over the history, but at the most extreme point I did consult a lawyer for grandparent rights. During this time, my son had no contact with me, but when I dropped the grandparents' rights case I asked for things to go back to normal. My son expressed that he wanted things to go back to normal, but that a lot of damage had been done and he really didn't know if we could go back to normal. For Mother's Day, my daughter decided to take me out to dinner, and she begged Elle to go and bring the baby, oldest was with mom. Elle eventually did agree on the condition it wasn't on Mother's Day, and he, the baby, and B came. B was quiet most of dinner, but did talk to my daughter a few times, I guess they have a pretty good relationship. B held the baby the entire time, and wouldn't let me hold or take pictures, part of the falling out was over pictures and Facebook, so I found this to be petty. Overall, I would have called dinner a success. At the end I hugged my son and told him I was proud of him for putting his foot down and coming to dinner with his daughter, and that I hoped he could continue to do that. Looking back, I know I shouldn't have said anything. My son called me later that night and told me that he couldn't continue to have a relationship with me. He said that B was their child's mother, and he wouldn't ever bring the baby anywhere without her blessing. I was drunk when he called because I have had a hard time coping, and I admit I lost it a little bit on the phone call and told him it was despicable that he couldn't man up to his wife, and that he should have come to see me on Mother's Day because I am his mother. He ended up hanging up on me. I called the next day and profusely apologized to him. I know it was wrong of me to have said what I did, and I told him I want a relationship with him. He told me he couldn't do this with me anymore. I have been heartbroken ever since, but I understand I guess. I called him last night and told him that I wouldn't be contacting him or his wife anymore ever, and that I respected that we wouldn't have a relationship. I also let him know I would be taking him off as my power of attorney and out of my will so he never had to be bothered with anything from me again. I don't have much anyways. He got mad at me and called me a sorry excuse of a mother, and now my daughter is saying I'm manipulative. I really don't understand how I was wrong in giving him what he wants. Normally I'd say it's your money and you can do what you want which is still true, but yet you are the asshole and you are absolutely being manipulative. You fell out with his wife because you didn't like or follow the rules that she was setting around their child. The you consulted an attorney for grandparents' rights and followed that up by pressuring them to come to a Mother's Day meal, insulted both of them at the end and now you're holding money over their head in an attempt to either hurt your son's feelings or to get him to obey you. Do better because right now you're making a lot of bad decisions. You are the asshole. You don't have to include him in your will. But what you said about him putting his foot down was passive aggressive and mean. You blame his wife for the problems with your son but you've behaved extremely badly again and again. It sounds like you posted pics of his child on Facebook without their permission. It's not petty of them to not be okay with that. You weren't giving him what he wants. You removed him from the will to make him feel bad. You did that to hurt him. Now you won't have a relationship with him or his child. Aren't you the one who was posting a little while back who only realized they'd screwed up when your dill told you to only contact them through a lawyer after you threatened grandparents' rights? If you are the same person you are the asshole then and you are still the asshole now. I'm sure losing his inheritance and getting rid of a mother like you seems like quite an amazing deal to your son. You are the asshole, but it's your money, so you can do whatever you want. Even without the context of your initial fight and falling out. You trying to overextend and sue for grandparent rights is laughable. You sound an awful lot like that jealous overbearing MIL that thinks your relationship with your son is more important than his with wife and child. I certainly don't blame him for cutting you out, and you're by all means entitled to cut him out financially. Ultimately you seem very petty, and I'd bet if you shared the details of your falling out, your behavior would be even more damning. You are the asshole. I remember you. Am I the asshole for the way I answered my friend's questions about my abortion? To get right into it, I had an abortion a few years ago. I'm not ashamed of it and I don't regret it, and I'm very lucky to have been living somewhere where it was legal. I know there's going to be people hating on me for that alone and you're allowed your opinion. But that's not what I'm asking for judgment on. 
One of my friends, Abby, told me recently that her friend, Beth, was about to have an abortion. Abby knows that I've gone through it, so she asked if I'd be willing to come over and hang out with them to help support her. I've met Beth a few times at parties and whatnot and she and her husband seemed really nice. I can't say we had much in common, but I like talking to her. So we've been hanging out a bit more here and there. I don't want to write about someone's personal feelings, so I'll just say she hasn't been handling it well and I feel terrible for her. She and her husband have three kids already and only recently moved back out of his parents' house, so to be blunt this was an issue of resources more than lack of wanting. A lot of her questions have now started veering off into, how do you go on after this territory? I've told her everything I can think of one day at a time, getting back into routines, self-care when you're able to, etc. Well yesterday I was over and she kept asking those same kinds of questions, like, how did you deal with the guilt? And, when does this grief end? I did my best to comfort her she's in a lot of pain, I really sincerely want to help. She wound up snapping at me and basically said I was feeding her crap answers. She called them, Disney lines, and asked me outright how I personally dealt with the mourning period. And so, I told her I didn't have one. I don't like to admit it because I've seen people get really upset over it, but truthfully I didn't feel anything like that about my abortion. I don't want children ever, and my dad has always been really progressive growing up. Beth was going through something much harder, and I guess it just didn't phase me in that manner it was simply a minor surgery for me. The money spent and work missed were the things I was most upset about. I tried to also add that I know a few women myself who have gone through this too and can probably relate to her more. I started to tell her I really just wanted to help and that I could see if any of them maybe wanted to meet up or maybe just weigh in on what they did, but she got very quiet and asked me to leave. Next thing I know, Abby is calling me to let me know that Beth has posted something on Facebook about me and how I'm a heartless murdering monster. I don't even know what to think. I'm sorry this is so rushed, I'm just in shock. I've already been unfriended by a few of my other parent friends, and I'm thinking it's related. I'm not on Facebook but Abby sent me screenshots, and they're, harsh. I guess I just want to know if I deserve it. So, was Ida? Should I have said something else? Not the asshole. Her guilt is overflowing to you, so stay safe. You have your peace, and she is just lashing out because she needs to push the guilt away. Not the asshole. Holy shit. I'm so sorry she's lashing out like that. Your feelings aren't wrong. They're just not her feelings. For her to do this because you're not the perfect mirror for her own feelings is really inappropriate. Hope you're doing okay. Not the asshole. She is feeling shame and guilt and is trying to push it off on you. She also appears to be one of those people who think that everyone who does not agree with her views and opinions are morally bankrupt sinners. The worst kind. Wow. What a slap in the face for you. I'm so sorry because this is the epitome of choice. You shared your honest story. You were vulnerable in your own right and having that weaponized against you is just super icky. I'm so sorry. Thank you for being honest. Please keep being honest and brave. Info Why did you offer to help this person when you knew you didn't have the tools to do so? The other woman was obviously looking for emotional guidance based on very different criteria than what was important to your experience. You knew this as you talked to her. Maybe not at first, but after a few moments, you certainly did, as you've described above. My question is an honest one. Why did you insist that she accept your emotional experience when it was obvious she was in so much pain?